the next topic is outpost so when we talk about outpost it is basically a service a physical thing it is okay it is a physical thing which is delivered to us by aws so we have to order it basically so we'll be discussing about outpost over here the key concepts and how it works So let us first discuss what is Outpost. So it is a fully managed service that will extend your AWS infrastructure, services, APIs and the tool to your premises. Why this would be required? It can be required when you basically want to, you know, when you have some compliance or governance requirement then in that case, you would be using the outpost. Okay, so that all the data, all the services of AWS are being served to you from your on-premises itself. So it can be on-premise private cloud. Okay, so it is nothing but it's a pool of compute and the storage. So on, on outpost, you can have resources such as EC2 instances, EBS volumes, ECS clusters, RDS instances, right? So, by providing the local access to AWS managed infrastructure, a post enables to build and run application on premise using the same programming interface in as in AWS region. Okay. So there, if there are requirements of low latency, local data processing, governance, at that time, Outpost would be really very important. So what are the key concepts of Outpost? First of all, whenever you order the Outpost, okay, you can either order the Outpost rack, which is the entire rack of servers, or you can order one single Outpost server. When you are ordering the outpost rack, you would be sent with the checklist that needs to be there on your premises for this to be installed. The AWS team would be coming to your on-prem and would be helping you install this network this. Okay, and server is the smaller, smaller version of rack. So let's understand the key concepts over here. First is output site, then outpost configurations, Outpost capacity, outpost equipments, outpost racks, servers, service link, local gateway, and local network interface. So let us one by one understand what are all of these. Outputs, outpost site. So the customer managed physical building where AWS will install your outpost, it's called as outpost site. So the site must meet the facility, networking and power requirements for the outpost. And even some physical infrastructure like what should be this door or what would be the size of door, the size of room, all of those things should be, uh, you know, met over here. Then we have outpost configurations. Configurations of EC2 compute capacity. EBS storage capacity, networking support. Each configuration has unique power, cooling and weight support requirements. So you have to tell that beforehand that what kind of uh, EC2 capacity you want, what is the EBS capacity, RDS capacity because accordingly the compute, uh, sorry, the power networking and the weight support would be changing. Then the outpost capacity, same compute and the storage resources available on the outpost. So you can manage and view the capacity of the outpost from the outpost console. Then we have outpost equipment. So this is the physical hardware that provides the access to AWS outpost services. Hardware will include rack, server, switches, cabling, which is owned and managed by AWS. So as I said that the AWS team will come to set this up. You can schedule that. Okay. Then we have outpost rack. It is the outpost form factor that is an industry standard. 
forty two U rack. It includes rack mountable server, switches, network patch panel, power shelf, and blank panels. Then you have outpost server. So it is again an outpost form factor, which is industry standard one U or two U server, which can be installed in a standard EIA three hundred ten D nineteen compliant four post rack. Outpost server provides local compute and networking services to the site that have limited space or smaller capacity requirements. Then we have service link. So network route that enables communication between your outpost and its associated region because as we said that outpost is the extension of AWS region, okay? In the backend, outpost would be connected with any one of the AWS region. So this is the network route that enables communication between outpost and AWS region. Each outpost is extension of an availability zone and associated region. And then we have local gateway. It is a logical interconnect virtual router that enables communication between outpost rack and your on-premises network. Lastly, we have local network interface. It is a network interface that enables communication from an outpost server and your on-premises network. So what all things this would be supporting? So let's have here the support of rack and server. What will outpost rack support and what will outpost server support? So EC2 instances, yes in both. ECS clusters, yes, no. Then we have EKS, yes, no. Then we have app mesh. Envoy proxy, like app mesh, envoy proxy. So is it supported? So yes in both. So this is about the compute. Then if we talk about storage, then EBS. So EBS obviously because EC2 is supported in both. So EBS will also be supported in both. Okay. Then S3. S3 is being supported in rack. Then we have analytics and databases. So for that we have elastic cache. So elastic cache is supported in server in rack but not in server. Then we have EMR cluster, elastic map reduce cluster, supported in rack but not in server. We have RDS. RDS is supported in rack but not in server. Lastly, if we talk here, then I'll just it is a few of this. And lastly, we have the networking components. So the networking components that are supported is VPC. So yes, it is supported in rack as well as server. Application load balancer, it is supported in rack, not in server. Then we have IoT, green grass. This is supported in both. And lastly, SageMaker for machine learning. It is supported in both. Okay, SageMaker Neo. That is supported in both. Right. So these are the different services which are supported in RAC and server. And these were the key concepts that we need to be aware about when we talk about outpost. How the outpost will now work, that we need to understand. Okay. So, Outpost is designed to operate with constant and consistent connection between the Outpost and AWS region. So to achieve this connection to the region and to local workloads in your on-premises, see now outputs need to be connected both the ways. Okay, it should be connected to your on-prem, it should be also connected to the AWS region. So you must connect your outpost to your on-prem as well as to the region, both the ways. Right. So what are the components? How we can have this connection? So the components are 
we have some network components that we'll be discussing. We have VPCs and subnets, the routing, DNS, service links, local gateways and local network interface. Out of this, the last three we discussed in our the key components as well. So let us understand what is this network component for which I'll be taking you to the whiteboard again where we'll be having few diagrams. It will be easier for us to understand over there. So first of all, let us just try to discuss the network component where we would be seeing AWS region and on-premises network, a VPC with multiple subnets in the region, an outpost in on-premise network, and a local gateway for rack or local gateway for server on your premise. Right, so how the diagram would look like for that? So we have the region, okay? Then what we have? We have the on-prem. That is our customer premise, right? Then we have the VPC, which is spread across the region and on-premises. Okay, so we are creating this network, which is there present both the ways. So let me just create this like this and let's not have any color into it. This is our VPC. Okay, inside of the VPC, if it is there inside of a region, then what do we have inside of it? We have availability zones. And into this availability zones, we can create the instances, right? Or subnets as well. Okay, so let's just create the subnets as well inside of these. So let's say I'll just differentiate between the color for better understanding. Okay. Then what do we have? We would be having the outpost track. That would be also into the on-prem. So let's say that this is a outpost rack. Okay. And this outpost rack would be having subnet. So I'll again copy paste this one to represent the of our on-prem in the outpost. So let me just change the color of the border here. And let us just put this transparent. It will be much better understood. Okay. Apart from that, we have the local gateway and the local network interface. The local gateway would be for rack and local network interface would be for server. Sitting over here. Right. Perfect. So this is the entire diagram. Now let's label this. This is our region. Okay, this is our on-prem, this is our VPC, now important part over here, VPC is spread across region and it is including the outpost as well. This orange color line represents outpost. So VPC is spanning on-premises and AWS region. Then we have availability zone over here, this is AZ1 and let's say now what do we have this we have this as our subnet one this is our subnet two and this is our subnet three inside of the subnet we can have ec2 instances here also we can have the ec2 instances on outpost Now this is our local gateway. It depends what we are having. Okay, if you are having outpost rack, then it would be local gateway. If you are having local network interface or say we are having outpost server, then it would be local network interface. So what is the use of this? It will be a connecting link between the region that we are connected to and the local network so it would be sending the local traffic to local network and 
the regional traffic to the internet and the outpost and the region is connected so this is our network component which is denoting that the outpost extends an amazon vpc from aws region to the outpost with the vpc component that are accessible in region including internet gateway virtual private gateway transit gateway and endpoints then we have another component that we have to discuss now i will be taking you back to the slides because we don't have any other diagrams so i'll take you back to the slides the next is vpc and subnets so vpc spans all availability zones in aws region you can extend any vpc in a region to your outpost by adding the outpost subnet to add the outpost subnet to vpc specify the arn of the outpost when you create the subnet okay so output supports multiple subnet you can specify the ec2 instance subnet when you launch the ec2 instance in your outpost you cannot specify the underlying hardware where the instance is deployed because the outpost is a pool of aws compute and storage capacity so each outpost can support multiple vpcs that can have one or more outpost subnet right then we have routing by default every outpost subnet inherits the main route table from its vpc you can create a custom route table and associate with the outpost subnet so the route tables for outpost subnet will work as they do for availability zone you can specify ip address internet gateway local gateway virtual private gateway and peering connection as destinations so it would be just working same as other route tables then we have dns for network interfaces connected to a vpc ec2 instances and outpost subnets can use amazon route 53 dns service to resolve domain names to ip addresses so route 53 will support the dns features such as domain name registration dns routing health check for the instances running outpost both the public and private hosted availability zone are supported for routing traffic to a specific domain right we have already discussed about this then we have the service link the service link is connection from your outpost back to your chosen aws region the service link is an encrypted set of vpn connection that are used when the outpost communicate with your home region then we have the local gateways So local gateway is supported with outpost rack includes a local gateway to provide connectivity to your on prem network if you have outpost rack you can include a local gateway as a target where the destination is your on premises network then last component is local network interface so with outpost so outpost server you create this local network interface it includes a local network interface to provide connectivity to your on prem network a local network interface is available only for outpost server running on an outpost subnet right so these were all the components that we have for outpost so this is it for this particular module everyone so what all things did we discuss in this module we discussed quite a few things right so let's just have a quick recap of what all things we discussed so we discussed about first of all we started with dns that is domain name system what is this this allows you to convert your domain name into ip address so we understood on how this domain name system how dns works okay so the first component that uh, 
our uh, query, the DNS query would be coming through his DNS resolver. If the IP address of the requested domain is cached over there, then it would be written directly or else it would be contact, it would be contacting to the root servers. Root servers would be trying to find that IP address of the name servers and accordingly the entire flow will go to the authoritative server. From authoritative server, we would be going to the name servers, right? So that is how the DNS would work. Then after we understood that route 53 is the DNS service which is being provided by us by AWS. It is 100% available service like it is engineered for 100% availability, highest in any of the AWS service. It is spread globally and it works on edge locations. Right. Then after into the route 53, we discussed about all the key components of it. What are the different key components? There were quite a few. We discussed all of them. And we discussed about uh, in depth about record types. That too, specifically the A, quadruple A and C name. So A is for IPv4 address record. Quadruple A is for IPv6. C name is canonical name, which would be then pointing to another record. Instead of directly IP address, it would be pointing to another record or another domain name. Then we talked about different routing policies that we have on route 53. So we have uh, different routing policies such as simple, we had failover, latency, geolocation, geoproximity, multi-valued, weighted. So all of these are the different routing policies that we have on Route 53, right? Then after, we started with CDN, that is Content Delivery Network. We understood what is CDN. It is used for providing content faster to the users. So we can just give the content to the users very quickly using the edge locations. So we cache our data, it can be static data, it can be dynamic data and it depends on to the TTL value that whether the data would be fetched from the edge locations, edge servers or from the origin servers. If the TTL is not expired then it would and the data is cached on edge servers then it will be returned back directly. Edge servers are the nearest servers from the user. Origin servers are where our files actually reside. It can be S3, it can be our HTTP web server, right? We have to give time to live value over there to decide that for how much time we have to cache that particular data. So we discussed about how the CDN will work. Then after we discussed about what is CloudFront. Okay, CloudFront is the service provided by AWS for content delivery network. Then we discussed about how to configure this particular CloudFront. Lastly, we started with the topic of Outpost. So if you want the low latency or local data processing, then you can have the AWS services on your premises. How you can get this? You can order either the outpost rack or outpost server. Rack is the larger version, server is the smaller version, rack supports more services, server will support less services. We discussed about the key concepts of the outpost rack and server, right? And lastly, we discussed about all the components of the outpost rack where we understood that outpost extends the AWS region 
or the availability zone right so these are all the different concepts that we have understood in this particular module that was about edge services so that's it for this module thank you everyone